what is mixed methods research? Should you use it in your study? And if so, what would it look like? Would you collect qualitative and quantitative data at the same time, one before the other? How would you analyze them? There's a lot of questions there, isn't there? In this video, I'm gonna to start to unpick some of this stuff so you can get a better understanding of mixed methods and figure out where it might be helpful in your research. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and I help PhD students get out of their own way and finish their doctorates. In recent years, mixed methods research has become increasingly popular, and it's being used in more disciplines than ever before, which is great. But PhD students ask me a lot of questions about mixed methods. There's an awful lot of confusion out there, so let's start clearing that up. So what is mixed methods research? Mixed methods research is exactly what it sounds like. It is the combination of qualitative and quantitative methods. But why combine them? Well, let's start with the basics. Quantitative research is all about numbers. You gather quantifiable data, like survey responses or test scores. You then analyze that data to uncover patterns, trends, or relationships. On the other hand, qualitative techniques enable you to understand people's experiences, perspectives, and emotions. It includes things like interviews and focus groups. And this captures detailed descriptive information that can't easily be quantified. But what if you could use both to answer your research questions? That is the magic of mixed methods. It allows you to take the best of both worlds, numbers to quantify your findings, and the rich, detailed, qualitative data to explore meanings and insights. So where can mixed methods research be valuable? One of the major advantages to mixed methods research is that it helps you answer more complex research questions. Sometimes numbers alone can't explain the full story, and qualitative data alone can be too subjective. For example, if you're studying student satisfaction with online learning, quantitative data from a survey might show that most students are satisfied, but the why behind that satisfaction is where the qualitative data comes in. You could interview students to understand what specifically makes them happy or frustrated with online learning. In other words, mixed methods research allows you to build a fuller picture. By combining the breadth of quantitative data with the depth of qualitative data. Now let's talk about how mixed methods research actually works. Now there are several ways in which you can go about it, and each one depends on how you want to integrate the quantitative and the qualitative. Let's take a look at each of them. One of the most common designs is the convergent design. In this design, you collect both quantitative and qualitative data at the same time. You then analyze them separately and compare, contrast, validate, or merge the results. It's like bringing together two pieces of a puzzle to see how they fit. For example, you might gather quantitative data on people's use of a fitness app and also do interviews to understand why people use the app in the way that they do. Then you'd compare the numbers about people's usage of the app with the qualitative data from the interviews to see the bigger picture. Another design is the explanatory sequential design, where you start with quantitative data collection and analysis, and then use qualitative data to explain or expand on the findings. For example, you might survey students about their online learning experience and then follow that up with interviews to understand why they feel that way. Then there's exploratory sequential design, where you start with qualitative data to explore a phenomenon and then use quantitative data to test or measure the patterns that emerge from the qualitative phase. For example, you might interview people to understand why they prefer certain brands of coffee and then create a survey to measure how common those preferences are among a larger group of people. Get into the comments on this one. Let me know which of these approaches you find the most appealing. If you're thinking about doing a mixed method study or if you are doing a mixed method study, I wanna hear from you. Do you prefer the convergent design where you do qualitative and quantitative at the same time? The explanatory one? where you do quantitative followed by qualitative, or the exploratory one, where you do the qualitative first and then the quantitative. I would love to know, get typing. And whilst you're in there, let me know if you've got any questions about mixed methods, I would love to help you out. Now let's talk about integration. And this is the real heart of mixed methods research. This is the most defining feature of it, and it's what makes it so powerful. 
And integration is about how you bring together the qualitative and the quantitative to get that cohesive understanding. But you're not just sticking them both in a bowl and mixing them together. You are interweaving them. Think of integration as the bridge which connects your two sets of data. Simply collecting both types of data isn't enough. You need to bring them together in a meaningful way because this allows you to see that relationship between the numbers and the narratives. And that gives you a much fuller, richer understanding of your topic than the two do separately. So let's take a closer look at integration within those three different types of mixed methods. Firstly, let's talk about the convergent design. So to recap, you gather both sets of data at the same time. Once you've collected the data, you compare or combine the results to see how they align or contrast with each other. For example, imagine you're studying customer satisfaction at an organic food store. You could distribute a survey, a quantitative survey, asking customers to rate their satisfaction on a scale of one to 10. And you might find that most customers give high satisfaction ratings. However, you could also do qualitative interviews at the same time. You might learn, for example, that whilst customers are generally happy with the product quality, they feel the store is a little bit too expensive. In other words, you're merging the numbers with the stories. So the survey tells you what people think and the interviews explain why they think that way, giving you a more complete picture of customer satisfaction. Now let's look at the explanatory sequential design. In this design, integration works a little bit differently. Here, you start with the quantitative data collection and then you do the analysis of that data and you use the results of that analysis to guide the next step, the qualitative data collection. So you collect and analyze the quantitative data first, numbers first. Then, based on what the numbers tell you, you plan your qualitative phase. And this phase is designed to help you dive deeper into the quantitative results. You probe specific areas where you want to understand better. The numbers inform what you do in the qualitative phase. The qualitative phase is shaped by the quantitative phase. For example, let's say you're studying customer satisfaction at the organic food store again. You might first collect survey data from customers, asking them to rate their satisfaction with things like product variety and prices and service. And after analyzing that survey data, you might find that whilst most customers are happy with the product selection, many rate the prices quite poorly. So for the qualitative phase, you might decide to conduct interviews with some of the dissatisfied customers to explore the reasons why they're dissatisfied. Perhaps they feel the prices are too high compared to other stores, but they value the organic selection. The survey results guide the follow-up interviews, helping you focus on the specific issues that you wanna get into a bit further. Finally, we have the exploratory sequential design. In this design, integration happens in the opposite order. Here, you start with the qualitative data, and then you use the results to inform the development of a new solution, intervention, or measure, which you then test quantitatively. So you begin by gathering qualitative data to explore your topic. After analyzing that data, you use the insights that you've gathered to create something new like an intervention or a tool or a measure. Then you use quantitative methods to test or validate the thing that you've developed. Let's stick with the example of the organic food store. You might start by conducting interviews with customers to explore their experiences of shopping at the store. And through these interviews, you might discover that many customers would be willing to shop at the store regularly if there was a loyalty program or discounts for bulk purchases. Now, based on this feedback, you create a new loyalty program. And afterward, you design a survey to test whether customer satisfaction and frequency of visits improve with the introduction of that new program. In other words, you begin by gathering the feedback, the qualitative feedback. You use that to create something new, like a loyalty program, and then you test it with a quantitative survey to measure the impact that it's had. So the way integration works really depends on what design you choose. In the convergent design, you merge both sets of data to compare and create a full picture. In the explanatory sequential design, you use the quantitative results to guide the qualitative phase, diving deeper into the findings. And then in the exploratory sequential design, you start with the qualitative data to build something new, and then you use quantitative methods to test it. So integration isn't just about gathering both types of data. 
It's about using one to enrich or inform the other. Popping up on your screen right now is another video you might find helpful if you're thinking about your research design. It's about a huge mistake that a lot of PhD students make when they're writing up their methodology chapter. To learn more about that and how to avoid it, go and check it out. I'll see you in there.